welcome back to Trucking with Velox 18. We are here in Texas, Tejas, baby. And uh, we're, we're, today's, today's a bad day, man. Today's a bad day. I had no clue it was gonna be a bad day until I, uh, until I got up in the morning and uh, unzipped that curtain. But uh, that's, that's where the day started. That's where you guys are gonna watch this. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and roll the music real quick like and get straight into this video where, uh, hey, we'll find out Am I gonna hold this load hostage again? I don't know, I don't know. It's really up in the air. It's really up in the air, but you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to find out uh, what kind of shenanigans I've gotten myself into down here in the Lone Star State. Is that a good enough intro? I think that was good enough. I don't know, I'm out here in the middle of uh, everybody in the truck stop. What's up, everybody? Roll the music. see what's going on out here I know it's gonna be bright first time opening the curtain up oh yeah yeah that's bright all right we're gonna go up to the fence right there and we're going to uh, scan that QR code that's right there and uh, get ourselves checked in it's 10 o'clock and we got a 1030 appointment so we're gonna go and uh, get checked in now All right, so we uh, come over here and we scan this QR code instead of walking all the way over there and checking in with security. We can just check in right here. A little quicker, a little shorter walk. We don't need to burn any calories. We're truckers. All right, I gotta scan this thing. All right, well, I'm looking at the paperwork and uh, I've typed in the PO numbers that I can see on there. There's like four different numbers I tried and none of them seem to have an appointment attached to them. So either I don't have an appointment here or um, or we're, we're uh, I, I don't I'm, I don't know what number to put in or I'm putting in the wrong number or something's going on. So I'm going to go up here to the guard shack and actually make them do their job. So I got to take this walk anyway. But uh, hopefully it's not it's not that they, uh, you know, messed up the appointment for me because I have another pickup tonight. So I'll be, uh, I'll be pretty upset if um, if I drove through the night just to sit over here. But it wouldn't be the first time that that's happened either. So uh, yeah, man, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, it's all good news at the guard shack. That feels like a pipe dream though, doesn't it? <laughs> How's it going? I tried to check in on my phone and uh, this, I can't, I don't know if I'm putting in the wrong PO numbers or if I just, uh, it's just saying that I don't have an appointment, um, you know, attached to that number or whatever. I tried the numbers up in the right hand corner there Uh, yeah, that was the first time I, well, first one I tried. You want to try it again? Yeah, try it. Well, guys, this is bullshit. Just saying. Just saying. <clears throat> I, uh, my appointment isn't until tomorrow at 6 p.m. It's today at 10 a.m. right now. So, I'm, uh, I have loads booked. I have loads booked to make me a little bit of money. I was gonna keep the truck rolling. That was the whole point of taking this load anyway. This load doesn't even pay that good, but pays good enough and it kept me rolling and it got me like you know into a load and out of a load really quickly that's the only reason why I took it and now that's not the case 
and I have three loads booked after this one to get me home for Gus's birthday. That's right. That's right. So I'm going to have to cancel three loads because these brokers are incompetent. And, uh, you know, before you guys say, well, you should, you should always call the receivers to uh, verify appointments. You, how, how many hours am I supposed to spend on the phone? And how many calls am I supposed to make for one load? Like, how, many, how much time do you guys think I have? Because I don't. And I won't. That's the broker's job. If they can't do their one job, then they're completely useless in this industry. I'm having a, I'm, a, I'm having a, I don't usually talk bad about brokers, but this kind of stuff just chaps my hide because it's literally their only job is to organize the load so that I don't have to follow up and do all the work for them. So, the frozen, uh, uh, frozen receiving doesn't even, uh, they don't come in until 5 p.m. tonight. So the earliest, even if they wanted to work me in tonight, the earliest I would get empty is, you know, by like the middle of the night tonight. If, if they even want to work me in. And I have a pickup at 8.30. 8.30 p.m. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pissed off and I'm disappointed because like I said, I made all the decisions I made once my trailer got fixed yesterday. I made all the decisions that I made, um, with the sole purpose of being home for Gus's birthday. And so that's why I booked up, booked out loads way farther in advance than I normally would like to. I took less on loads than what I normally would like to, just so that I could be certain that I got home for Gus's birthday. And now, now all of that is, uh, you know, is a, is a no-go. And I'm stranded in Texas, which isn't a great freight market. And uh, the loads get scooped up quick down here because there's a lot of trucks down here. And, uh, and I'm going to have to call this broker and, um, I know they're going to tell me just to wait on, sit up, sit on it, wait on it. And, um, you know, it's tomorrow at 6 PM. Um, you know, do I, do I, do I force the issue and tell them, Hey, you guys got to find somewhere for me to cross talk this today. Um, you know, do I, do I kind of try to play hardball? Um, you know, this isn't three days like the last time when I had an issue like this where my appointment wasn't for three days. Uh, this one is tomorrow. So, you know, even though it's their uh, clerical error of inputting the wrong appointment time, um, you know, one one day is a little is a little more of a uh, um, I don't know. I guess it's a more reasonable. Um, uh, layover situation. So, um, I mean, layover shouldn't be, uh, you know, on the table for, uh, broker errors, but then again, everyone makes mistakes and it just sucks when they impact your family and your life. And, uh, all it's going to cost them is a couple hundred dollars for a truck layover. It's like, how is that? Uh, Last time this happened, I made a video called um, <laughs> called uh, Holding the Load Hostage, and I told the guy, because he was trying to tell me I had to wait for three days, and I'm like, hey, listen, you want you want this load delivered at all, uh, or do you want do you want it to want me just to sell it to get my money, because I'm gonna get it off the truck, and uh, I kind of I kind of I, I I threatened. Um, doing something crazy like that, you know, taking a claim on, on my insurance, selling the freight myself. And, uh, and really I would never do that. I don't even know where I would sell a bunch of stuff. Uh, it just seems silly, but at the same time, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I did last time. We're not going to do that this time, but 
uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to start making some phone calls, man. I'm gonna have to start making some phone calls, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to just you know find out what the broker wants to do, and then uh, I, I'm gonna have to cancel those loads because I squished the loads together really tight. That was that's the whole point of running you know lower paying freight is that it's all squished together. There's no wasted time, uh, so you're just hammer it down a bunch of miles in a shorter amount of time and it kind of you know compensates you for the for the lower rate per mile because you're you know, you're busting some miles down but uh anyway so i don't know what i'm gonna do man i don't know but i'm gonna call this broker right now and i uh, figured out i guess i'll record that for you guys i'll turn on my other camera and i'll record it is very important to us. Please wait for the next available agent. They just texted me while I'm on hold. Your call is very important to us. Please wait for the next available agent. Very important to us. Please wait for the next available I'm, agent. I'm texting, texting them back and saying I'm on site, but they're saying I have a bad appointment. Your call is very important to us. Please wait for the next available agent. I just texted the appointment for this PO isn't until tomorrow at 1800. I'm on hold with your office now. Your call is very important to us. Please wait for the next available agent. Your call is very important to us. Please wait for the next available agent. Just because you say it every five seconds doesn't make it true. I feel like your call is not very important to me because you keep doing that. I'd rather listen to the music. Your call is very important to us. Please wait for the next... You know what I feel like right now? I feel like my call is really important to them. <laughs> I don't know why. They texted back. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I will just let you take care of it from here with our office people. <laughs> Good deal. Thanks for texting. All right, so I'm having to record a second segment because the Your first call is very important to us. The first one was too long. I can't upload like an eight minute video. So I've been on hold for so long i don't even know how long the first call was but this one's already five minutes so i think maybe it's more like 15 minutes i've been sitting on hold how did i miss a phone call
should I call this random Indiana, Indiana number back? Because they wondering me, I think. Good morning, Mrs. Susan. How may I help you? Oh, hi, Susan. Uh, I didn't realize you were the one that texted me. Um, I saw I had a missed oh. call from this number, and I'm still waiting on hold um, on the other on the main line. So I was, uh, I was, I just figured, well, I have a missed call from another Indiana number, so maybe I'll just try that one. But I didn't realize it was the same number that had texted me. Um, oh, gotcha. But <laughs> yeah, is there any way you can uh, like patch me over or get me through the holding process? I've been on hold for over 15 minutes, so I'm just trying to figure out what I should do. Um, okay, did somebody pick up the phone for you? No, it, it just it just went into the auto. Just ringing. Yeah, and it, well, it, it it did like a little hold music, and then and then it goes into a a, um, a cycle of just ringing for like. Ah, uh, like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a bajillion calls coming in all the time. This is my personal cell. That's the easiest way to get a hold of us. Um, but I did take. Um, this is about uh, the load to Rono. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and they said you had a bad appointment. Yeah, well, it's it's a good appointment. It's just not not for thirty something hours from now. Um, yeah, that's insane because I'll, I'll, everything in our system says something different. All right, let me get to work on it for you. Um, yeah, and you don't have to con continue to be on hold. Um, I'm gonna take care of it from here and have my bosses look into it for you, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay. Okay. Well, I have. I. I mean, I. The only reason I kind of booked this load at the the rate that I did is because I could I could squeeze a bunch of loads in for the end of the week, and so I have three loads scheduled um, between tonight, tomorrow, and the next day, and so okay. um, without those, this this trip is uh, gonna lose me money. So I, um, I I'm I'm tempted just to maybe maybe call and cross stock this thing, and then I'll I'll come back and deliver it for you guys another time for an additional fee or something because I. I can't sideline the truck for 30 something hours because not only what you know is it a day lost but it's also the next three loads that I already have planned and I'm I gotta back out of it for those brokers right. and stuff so it's kind of gotcha. one of those situations that where I'm I'm gonna burn three bridges um, and two of them are new new because brokers one. yeah two mm -hmm. of them are new brokers just like you guys um, because I'm running some lanes that I don't normally run out here so I uh, I yeah so I, I don't know I'm I'm gonna start making some phone calls and just see you know if there is a place around here since I'm not familiar uh, with this area Perfect. as much so I'll see um, right. what I can do yep and I'll get to work on this end okay I'll let you know as soon as I find out okay all right thanks Susan all right thank you honey and what was your first name Nick Nick got it all right honey I'm all right all right thank you thank you mm, bye, -bye. bye now hey um she called me honey, so it's all good, right? <laughs> um, all right, I am, um, I am gonna uh, start looking up cross dock facilities in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and um, we'll just see, we'll see what happens. Um, I kind of just wanted to plant that seed in there and see if they could just make something happen on there, and you know, if they have something, um, you know that that would that would work better on their end i i doubt they can do much to salvage my load for tonight but who knows who knows i'm gonna at least give them a chance because maybe maybe if they have a good relationship with albertson's which i doubt but maybe you know you never know they might have someone on their end that's a really good sweet talker that can uh, get albertson's to offload me um you know before before the frozen people even get here i mean because ultimately it's a frozen load you really don't want to mess with the frozen load the customer doesn't want to mess with the, i mean you a lot of times when you have a frozen load they don't want you sitting out in the sun um you know possibly it, it just it's the the chances of uh a frozen load going going south is um is higher than a, a you know like a dry load or something or even like a refrigerated load um so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I am. Uh, yeah. So that's so that's what happened. That was the phone call, and I just called her personal cell phone because I think she accidentally hit the call button when she was texting me, and so I got a little one. I got a little one ringer. Like, 
I thought I heard, I, I thought I felt, because I was holding the phone, I thought I felt a, a text message come through, and I looked, and then it didn't, nothing was there. Like, the, the, um, the missed call didn't even show up on my phone until I went into my call log, and then I was like, hey, wait, there's another Indiana number that called me. So, anyway, um, yeah, well, it didn't feel like she was blowing me off, though. Okay, well, I'm going to get on it. After she had told me, okay, I'll just let you deal with it with the office. And then she's like, hey, well, I'm going to get on it. It's like, yeah. Well, maybe if I tell you this, maybe you actually will get on it. Let's see. <laughs> um, I'm going to hold off on calling the other brokers for now. Um, I know that that's uh, like I would want to give them the most time that I can tonight. But if I cancel tonight's load, I'm canceling all the loads that I have left. So I'm gonna hold off a little bit before I fall off that load. Um, I'm definitely gonna give them some time. Um, you know, if I feel like this is just dragging on, then I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to create an artificial cutoff point and just say, here it is. This is this is where this is the cutoff point for me that I'm gonna fall off the next three loads if if this isn't resolved by a certain time. So. Uh, this is one of those deals, man. One of those deals in trucking. All right. Uh, we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right. Um, it's noon. Uh, I got a phone call from um, from uh, the broker, and they said they would. They were trying to get me in tonight. Trying. Operative word. Um, so, uh, I called one cold storage place and, um, and the phone just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. So I don't know, maybe they're closed. They're, I don't know. Maybe they, they're out of business or something. So I just kind of realized like, I'm just kind of stepping in, like I'm trying to be a middleman on something that, that, um, even though I technically possess the freight right now and it's my freight, um, that is like the broker never takes possession of the freight. Right. So it's, it's freight that's that being transported by the carrier. So I'm carrying the freight. It's my possession. I have it. Um, and it's between the, the shipper and the receiver, the the consignee. And um, and so I'm, you know, ultimately I have to kind of figure that. And that's where brokers, it's like they insert themselves in the middle of, of the deal, right? They're between the transport and the, the, whoever the, whoever's paying for the transportation, whether that's the, the consignee or the, the shipper themselves. Um, but so, but then now, so there's like this third party that it's their customer. If I try to contact, like I don't have a customer contact at the consignee to, to like nail stuff down. I don't, I don't know who the customer contact is at the shipper to like get things, uh, organized like this. So I'm kind of reliant on the broker to kind of come through and they're just kind of like, okay, we'll see what we're going to try and get you in tonight. So, um, you know, all of the, the hassle of it, um, uh, I'm going to hold out for, a for, a a large, um, uh, you know, not large, but I'm going to hold out for a pretty decent, um, you know, detention on this and, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to stick to my guns a little bit, uh, but I'm going to cancel my loads and I'm going to just, I'm going to deliver this load tomorrow night. It's, it's noon. By the time I get all that stuff figured out, um, it's, I, it's, it, I think it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. Um, so now I just need to call the broker for the load that picks up tonight at eight. And noon was kind of my cutoff. If I didn't have a resolution like in stone by noon, I just figured I need to give them enough time to find another truck. That's just common courtesy. It's not that broker's fault that the that my first loads broker uh, messed up the appointment time on the rate confirmation or whatever they who, whoever made the mistake. But it wasn't. I know it wasn't the <laughs> totally separate broker from my load that I'm supposed to pick up tonight. So. Uh, I'm going to call them and try and give them as much time as I can. And hopefully, um, you know, they, they can find another truck easy enough in this type of, uh, 
trucking market uh, that they don't hold it against me too much. Uh, so that's my plan right now. I'm going to hang out here at this pilot. I'm going to deliver this thing probably tomorrow. I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm going to deliver it tonight. But uh, I'm going to hop back on the load boards and I'm going to look for something uh, over the weekend from Saturday. And then we'll just start, we'll just start like trying to find stuff and I'll cancel the loads as I need to. Um, although with it being Thursday, I need to cancel the, uh, the Monday load because it has a Monday morning pickup. So I need to cancel that load today too out of New Mexico because he needs to get that load covered by tomorrow. You know, I, it's, it's a Monday morning pickup. I actually, he had it for, set for a, a noon appointment and he goes, it, does that work for you? Do you want me to move it around? I said, the earlier, the better. So he rescheduled it for 8 AM for me. So anyway, kind of a bummer, man. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm not stoked, not stoked on all this, but, um, you know, kind of like one of those things where if it was going to be multiple days, then maybe I would try to get the crosstalk situation figured out and run it through the channels that it needs to be run through. But I feel like if I, if I went that route today and I, and I, you know, pushed for, um, for that cross docking, you know, I need to get, it's still not just because I have possession of it. Doesn't mean that I, I own it. You know what I mean? Like it's a, like, I can't just, um, like it's like it's still not mine. I didn't purchase it, so um, it's you know I know a lot of guys commented on all my previous you know my my the previous time this happened I got so many conflicting um, uh, reports on what I should have done or shouldn't have done or what the real truth is. Uh, the fact is is that I as a carrier don't own it. I didn't buy it, so I can't just do with it what I want. Um, and I need the, uh, the consignee and, or the shipper to, um, you know, to, to facilitate and approve what I'm trying to do. Uh, because ultimately if I break that seal, the shipper might say, we our hands are, are not, especially with it being food product. They might be like, mm -mm, the chain of custody has been broken we are not responsible for that load. It may get rejected at the receiver after that. So it's not just like a, you know, a load of cardboard. It's, it's food. So there's a, there's like a, you know, there's a chain of custody that has to be there and they, they seal it up and it's sealed. Um, they actually, the way that they do it at that lineage, they close the doors inside the warehouse and seal it inside the warehouse. So when I drive away, they, I don't, I don't even see what's in my truck. They could be smuggling weird stuff and I, I wouldn't actually know. Uh, but it's part of the chain of custody stuff to make sure that people aren't tampering with food items. I mean, would you want a truck driver able to like go in there and root around your food before it gets to your grocery store? Like, I don't know. Uh, well, that seems kind of sketchy to me. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. I'm gonna start making some phone calls and uh, I'm not gonna record those because um, it's just gonna be me saying, hey man, this load, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna have to fall off the load, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm calling you, hopefully you have enough time to get it covered, blah, 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 blah. So, I've rambled on long enough, I'm gonna make these phone calls. All right, I just got off the phone with uh, the the one of the bosses at the brokerage. So basically I kept calling the main line and. And I couldn't get through. So I was like, man, this, this is too much. So I emailed back. I just replied to the email that whoever it was that sent me the rate confirmation. And I just said, I've been trying to get a hold of you so we can resolve the scheduling issue. Um, uh, I need, I need you to call me immediately so that I can try to mitigate my losses or my damages. I called it damages. Just saying, I'm just throwing words in there that mean something powerful. Um, because damages legally is, a uh, a whole lot more um, uh, of a strong word. So anyway, so I used that verbiage and then I got a call from two different people. <laughs> and uh, one said, hey, uh, my boss is working on it. She's trying to figure it out. She's gonna give you a call shortly. And then she called me like 30 minutes later and said, hey, I got your email. We're requesting uh, detention or layover. Um, and I said, okay. And so I told her, I said, I need like $1,000. Uh, usually I ask for $1,000 a day. Um, 
know, my truck makes a little bit more than that, but being that I'm not burning any fuel, you know, we can, we can call it good. I was like, and really it's, you know, like a day and a half cause it's 30 plus hours, um, from one appointment to, to, from the appointment that was on my rate confirmation until the actual appointment. And, um, so anyway, so she said she's gonna, that their rate for a layover for a truck for a layover is $150 a day. Uh huh. And then uh, I was like, yeah, that's, that, that doesn't even begin to cover. I said, I'm going to be burning in the, the extra time with the reefer running at negative 10 is going to be, you know, a decent amount of fuel. Like I'm going to be burning probably 50 to $60, maybe even $75 worth of fuel during that time. So $150, half of it's going to my reefer fuel to keep their product cold and, and, you know, frozen. And so I just said, you know, that just doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't even come close. And, um, so I told her, I said, Hey, um, you know, she said she can't even get close to the thousand. I said, well, 150 is not close. She said, I, she said, I think I can get you two days. I think I can get you two days of layover. And I said, well, I mean, that's the minimum already, right? <laughs> that's the, cause it, cause it is literally two days of layover. I should have delivered this morning. Instead I'm delivering tomorrow night. So that's today and tomorrow. That's, that's two days to me. And, uh, so I said 300 minimum. And I said, you guys have, I said, I'm losing out on my load. That's moving me around. And you guys have a load, a local load around here, around Dallas. It's just like a little 120 mile run. If we could, if you could help me out on the rate on that, give me the 300 detention, my truck will stay moving over the weekend. And, and then you won't, you know, I won't be out as much money. So that's kind of my idea. So she looked, she said, man, the one that you want already got covered, but we get them all the time. So I'll keep you in mind. If I see another one for this Saturday, I'm going to put you on it. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm doing right now. Um, it, it sucks. Uh, but you know, I can't come, uh, compound, 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 compound. Yeah. Compound. I don't know why that was hard for me to say. You can't compound a bad situation. Um, you know, if you try and flex on a broker and try to like, you know, make something happen, um, it, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. So I learned from my mistakes last time. Last time the broker was actually really cool. It, the last time that this happened to me, if you didn't watch that video, I don't know what you were doing. There's, it has like half a million views. It's by far my most watched video. So if you haven't watched the time where I threatened to hold the load hostage, you need to go back and you need to watch that because I've learned from my mistakes. Um, you know, I've talked to guys like DIY semi after that. Uh, I've talked to other people, all of the comments on there, like I said, a lot of them were conflicting. So sometimes you don't know who to believe and who to, you're like, that sounds good, but I think you're just telling me what I want to hear. Like, Oh, I could have got them for millions of dollars. Um, but really like a little bit, I need to just cut my losses, deliver this load tomorrow night. Um, and she asked me if I wanted to go and try and deliver it tonight. And I'm like, I have a spot at the truck stop. I don't want to like lose my spot at the truck stop to go hope that maybe I might. And you know, they don't have bathrooms over there. Um, I didn't even see a porta potty actually. Maybe there was tucked in a corner or something, but, um, I'll have to go back and watch the footage from earlier. Maybe there's a bathroom that I didn't see, but, uh, anyway, so, you know, it's like, it's, it's cool that they have a parking lot for people to park and sleep like rad, but they don't have bathrooms or showers or food or, you know, anything like that. So I'm not going to go over there and sit over there you know, for like 24 hours, like that's just silly. And then if I leave here and then go and then come back, like I'm going to miss out on my, my parking spot. So this is where I'm going to stay for the night. I'm just going to deliver this load on, um, what's today? Today's Thursday. So I'm going to deliver this load on Friday night and then I'm going to try and find stuff for over the weekend. And then we'll just roll the dice. So we've canceled all of our loads. All of our loads are canceled. We're starting from scratch on Thursday trying to cover the weekend and make some money. All right. And then we got to try to get home too. Somehow we got to try to get home because it's Gus's birthday next weekend. Not this Saturday, but the following Saturday is Gus's birthday. So I got to make sure I'm home by like, you know, Friday. Um, so I can not only be home, but be like rested and, uh, feel like a human being. Um, that's, that's, that's a good, that's a good thing for your kids' birthdays. Not just be there, but be like, your, your best, uh, your best self, not a zombie. So, all right, I'm gonna catch up with you guys in a little bit. Um, oh, today's Thursday. 
the Bengals play tonight on uh, Thursday Night Football, which is on Amazon Prime. So I guess I guess that's what I'll be doing, watching watching the Bengals play. Watching the Bengals probably lose to the Dolphins. I shouldn't say probably. The Bengals are a good team. They just, I don't know, man. They didn't look like it the first couple weeks. And last week they played the Jets, and they played a little better, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. The Dolphins are hot, and uh, they've got they've got a good team going down there. So, all right. Uh, yeah, catch up with you guys in a little while. All right, we are going to just uh, call it a night here at the truck stop. Um, nothing much came of uh, any further conversations I had. They actually asked me, they're like, the, the um, I forget what they keep calling it, like the, the something customer, like the final customer is what they keep calling it. The final customer is asking um, why you didn't make it on time, or if you made it on time, and if you didn't, why not? And um, I was like, I very clearly made it on time. And they're like, well, uh, everything we have says you had a 1030 appointment. So I'm not sure where, you know, where like they were basically, they're just like, you must've done something wrong. And I'm like, nope. So I sent them the text I got from their, from the check-in system. Cause I tried to do that online check-in system. Uh, I sent them the email. I mean, I sent them or I called them or sent them an email. Oh, you know what? She had texted me the night before, so I sent a text at like 10.38 or something like that. But it was only after I had sat on hold for like 20 minutes. So finally I was like, all right, I gotta find another way to contact them. But um, but yeah, and then they had tracking on me. So, you know, I, I after I woke up, um, and I went and tried to, to, to check in. I, I marked myself as arrived at 10.09 a.m. So like everything they have shows that I was there. And I have video proof. Hey, I got video proof, baby. Uh, check out Velux 18 on YouTube. to so see that I was there 5 a.m. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So they asked me that and I'm like, why? I, why are they like, it's like they're trying to find a reason not to give me layover for this. It's kind of weird, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand for that. Um, and I think they're trying to see what, you know, what, like somewhere there was a breakdown in communication. And I think they're struggling with why that happened. And they're, I think it's going to come out of their pocket. To me, it seems like a broker mistake. Uh, that's, that's what it seems like to me. Someone on their end, on their scheduling department scheduled the, the, um, appointment wrong or whatever. So anyway, all that to say, I already booked the load for Sunday. I've replanned my entire week next week. Um, and I'm actually looking for a load on Saturday to see if I can hop around here around Dallas. And then I'll pick up a load in Dallas on Sunday and get the heck out of here. So um, all's not lost, but we are taking a little bit of a, a time hit. So I'm trying to make the most of it. Um, I should be loaded right now, headed to New Mexico, but instead I'm waiting and I don't deliver for uh, 23 hours. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm still here for like the long haul. I've been here all day, but I'm gonna be here all day tomorrow too. So uh, anyway, all right, I'm gonna cut the video off. Love you guys, peace out. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we finally deliver this load. And uh, hopefully we can find something to run around and do on Saturday that's just local around Dallas. Make a few hundred bucks, maybe four or 500 bucks. And uh, then we'll pick up a load on Sunday and we'll head up to Michigan. That's right, that's where we're headed. For like 225 a mile but i don't care because i'm going i'm gone i'm not sitting around i'm not sitting around hoping i can find something no i found something that loaded on sunday that gets me an extra day ahead instead of waiting for monday to find something for 275 a mile i'm going to get out on sunday for 225 a mile and i'm going to get another load on tuesday out of michigan so that's how i'm rolling keep the truck rolling let's just i don't care 225 a mile let's go run it all right see you guys